Hi, I'm Paul Gray. Come explore Alaska with us and discover the diversity of its cultures in the land of the people of the far north. We'll travel 13,000 miles of roads to more than half a million square miles of Alaska wilderness. From tundra to mountains, oceans, villages, and towns, from art to wildlife, glaciers to thousands of miles of rivers and lakes, Alaska, a place that breeds discovery. On the west side of Alaska's Cook Inlet lies a piece of Lake Clark National Park and Preserve that sees few visitors. The park is a haven for wildlife, fish, beautiful rivers and streams, all framed by magnificent mountains that bear few tracks of man. Very few people inhabit this side of the Cook Inlet, but there is a summer lodge or two on the coast. The hub of this part of Lake Clark National Park between Tuxedney Bay and Chitna Bay is Silver Salmon Creek accessible by a small airplane from the Kenai or Sildotna Airport. We have about 75 miles of coastline here that comprises coastal Lake Clark National Park, and that ranges from the head of Tuxedney Bay to the head of Chinitna Bay. And the area of Silver Salmon is, is a community, a uh, loosely uh, uh, tied together community of about eight different landowners over a period of about uh, five miles. In this remote location, we find Silver Salmon Creek Lodge a lodge just off the inlet with a creek in front. Salmon call Silver Salmon Creek home, returning each year to spawn and end their cycle at the place of their birth. The return of the salmon brings a congregation of bears, which brings a congregation of bear viewers and photographers. Well, the bears don't come for the photographers, the bears come for the salmon. The king of the forest here is not man, but the brown bear. Silver Salmon's landing strip availability is what you call tide dependent. Meeting the airplane on the beach runway, Dave Carre, owner of Silver Salmon Creek Lodge, meets us in his Alaska taxis. These three and four wheelers pulling trailers will take us up to the lodge. Keep your camera ready. If we are lucky, we will see some bears on the way in. The bears in this part of the park are brown bears, often referred to as Alaskan coastal browns. They are cousins of grizzly bears, which mainly live inland. Estimates say that there are 35 to 45,000 brown and grizzly bears in Alaska as compared to the lower 48, which tallies up around 1,000 grizzlies. The image of the ferocious Alaskan bear is starting to diminish and that people are starting to appreciate them more for the gentle creatures that they really are. And that uh, Alaska 50 years ago, people were coming up here to, to hunt bears and I think the shift has been away from that. People in the town over in the peninsula, which is just a short jaunt away, is 40 miles across the water, um, are taken aback when they come over here by the, pl uh, the amount, number of bears and the amount of wildlife here. Uh, we've seen as many as 14 individual bears at one time. We see bears every day. Uh, you never know with any wild animal how many are going to be around, but we generally, an average this year, no, no less than five bears a day. Dave Carre grew up in the neighborhood of Lake Clark National Park and Preserve. At four million acres, Lake Clark is approximately 13 times the size of the Grand Teton National Park. Lake Clark and Mount Helenomna, home to native Denina Athabascans, was historically a transportation corridor, an important subsistence area. Dave's home as a youngster was coastal rainforest, alpine tundra, active volcanoes, serene fjords, high mountain lakes and saltwater estuaries with diverse wildlife. Beluga whales, brown and black bears, river otters, and bald and golden eagles. Located 150 miles southwest of Anchorage, it was this blissful solitude in the wilderness of Alaska where Dave Carre spent his formative years with his family. Today, Dave shares his knowledge of the land and its history to the guest at Silver Salmon Creek Lodge. I came to Alaska when I was a small boy at age three in 1954 and my parents were school teachers in the bush villages in uh, Pedro Bay on Nuliamna Lake and Nondalton as well. So I spent a lot of my youth in the, in the wilderness and enjoyed the wide range of activities that the bush offered, uh, hunting, fishing, running boats and so that was in my blood I guess you might say at an early age. 
and uh, went to grade school in Kenai and uh, college in Fairbanks and then worked in the field of psychology for a while and always liked working with people. I couldn't think of a better way to mix working with people uh, and to be in the outdoors than to run a, a lodge, a wilderness lodge. A short boat ride up the coast from Silver Salmon Creek will take us to Tuxedney Bay. This area being quite scenic, located in the, the management area of Lake Clark National Park. On the way to the bay, we can see waterfalls, complements of the glacial melt in the Chignik Mountains. Here we're at the mouth of Johnson River, Paul, and we're finding a little colony of harbor seals. And uh, the colony is building, there's quite a few here now, up to a couple hundred, I believe. And they're mixed in with some kitty wakes, right at the confluence of the Johnson River and Cook Inlet. That's better. Look at that. That's great right there. With the mountains behind you. We have volcanic mountains behind us. 10,000-foot uh, Mount Eliamna is only 15 miles behind us. And the Chigmet Mountains range all the way up to Denali, of course, so they're quite striking. Here we have the entrance to Tuxedney Bay. We have Chiswick Island over here to our right, and that's uh, managed by the uh, National Maritime Wildlife Refuge. And you can see the cliff section there, the outcropping of rocks on the lower part to the right here, and that's a major kittiwake rookery. The black-legged kittiwakes uh, use that for nesting. Their numbers are down from what they've been in recent years, and they're not sure exactly why, but uh, we have several hundred thousand nesting kittiwakes. And the only predator for the kittiwakes are the bald eagle and peregrine falcons. You'll see sometimes coming by the cliffs and trying to snatch their young. Otherwise, they have a perfect habitat here for rearing their, their little ones. Oh, that's a small blind that the federal biologists are using for studying the birds. A couple of caves coming up here, which are open on the back side. And there's even puffins that are nesting inside of them. Everybody likes puffins. They're a popular subject for photographers. And here we have mostly horn puffins, which have the white undersides, and a few tufted puffins, which are solid black body. And the puffins are pretty neat. They um, they fly with their wings underwater. They can use their wings to fly underwater. They use their orange feet as rudders. The cormorants, you can always tell the cormorants because they have no natural oils in their feathers. So they hang their wings out to dry. One of the first canneries established in Alaska. It's the old Chiswick Island Snug Harbor Cannery. And that was built in 1917. And during its uh, peak of operation in the 1930s, they had uh, as many as 75 people working there. And uh, it's quite a historic monument. Um, it hasn't been operating for 30 years. So they just have a caretaker there kind of watching the place. And it has, a, it has a lot of history to it, old retorts and boilers that they used for canning clams and canning salmon. At the end of the day, those that weren't careful dry out their boots. And then the campfire's lit. One full day at Silver Salmon Creek in Lake Clark National Park and Preserve is never long enough. And a week often seems too short. But at the end of the day, the bears, the salmon, the swans, and the people all take solace in having lived a full life, a complete life, in the heart of reality. Thanks so much for watching Exploring Alaska. See you next time. For more info about Alaska or our show, check out our website at exploringalaska.com. Well, there's no place on earth just like Alaska. No place that I would rather be. This land is not forgotten.